What's up, I'm Troubleshoot Killing Floor 3 is that, and in this quick video, I'll be showing you how to optimize it for the best possible performance. Just before we get into it, a couple of notes about performance in general. This game has been getting not the most positive reviews for its performance, or rather a lack thereof, and of course there's a lot of optimization that still needs to be done by the devs, which will hopefully come at some stage in the near future. Make sure you A, meet the game's minimum requirements, and B, have your system completely up to date. It's super important to update your NVIDIA, AMD, or Intel graphics drivers, as without doing so, you're likely to experience hitching, stuttering, and especially crashes in certain areas caused by certain actions. Updating your GPU drivers should completely fix that issue. So with all that out of the way, let's get into optimizing the in-game settings, configuration files, and more. But just keep in mind, we won't be covering Windows optimization at all. That's a whole nother can of worms. You'll find videos in the description down below showcasing a bunch of ways to get even more performance out of your system. So without further ado, let's begin. I've gone ahead and benchmarked all the different settings in this game. Obviously, it's very difficult to do so as the world just changes so quickly. There's a ton of Zs around you, things like that. When you're actually playing the game, you only have a few seconds to benchmark things in between waves. And of course, there'll be blood and guts and stuff spread everywhere in between. If you come to the main area here and try to optimize your settings, you'll get a general feel for how performance will be in the actual game itself. The only option we can't test here is of course vegetation as there's no vegetation around us. Currently with the default settings that I first loaded into the game with, I'm sitting at a solid 47 FPS, which is not the best. So what exactly can we improve? Simply pause your game, head into settings followed by video at the very top, and let's start. Right over here in the display section, make sure your resolution matches your display exactly, and your windowed mode should be full screen. If not windowed full screen, full screen should give you better input latency, etc. But personally, I like tabbing out a lot to YouTube, Discord, etc. So windowed full screen is more than good enough here. VSync should be turned off, and your frame rate cap should be dragged all the way up to unlimited, just so you can properly benchmark your performance while playing the game. Field of view technically does affect performance, but have this set to whatever you want and whatever you're comfortable with for the best experience that far outweighs your FPS count. FOV scaling is your preference. And then right at the very bottom here, motion blur and depth of field. Your preference once more, but I personally like having both of these turned off. It makes it a lot easier to see what's going on as you spin around, things like that. I would recommend checking out the accessibility tab at the very top. And then under motion, you'll find screen shake and camera bob. Having both of these turned off can result in less motion sickness possible causing effects. But of course, having a screen shake turned on adds more oomph to the guns that you use. And I definitely recommend leaving this set to on. Back to the video tab over here and scrolling down to the quality settings section, here's where we can get some real performance out of our system. So starting off at the very top with the default ultra preset, which changes all of these settings and more, enabling our FPS counter and finding a corner. The game feels noticeably choppy. There's a bit of stuttering. And of course, we're setting at a solid 48 FPS, which isn't the best. Moving to the high preset, we're at 54, 55 FPS, not too too bad down to medium 58 59 sort of somewhere around there not bad finally down to low obviously a lot of the lighting effects have changed and we've boosted way up to 88 fps so i'm going to keep things straight with you there are a ton of options here which is great most of them don't do anything in most cases i have everything set down to low here scrolling down everything else here is off and whatever the low preset chooses i'm sitting at a solid 96 97 fps I get around 140 if I'm not recording and not watching videos on other screens. Anyways, pausing settings video. Here's some freebies that you can raise without worrying about your performance pretty much at all on most systems. I've benchmarked everything, so I've got the numbers here. First of all, view distance quality should affect popping, things like that. I haven't seen a performance difference. Ultra, that's fine. Then reflection quality, while well, you'd expect this to actually change how reflections look. Ultra here, bam, reflections should look better and there's no performance difference. The there is a caveat here. We'll get there in just a moment when we get to reflections, lumen, etc. Then post-process quality, while this is supposed to play with blur, depth of field, and color grading, I've got both of those turned off. So the only thing it can change is color grading. I don't notice too much of a difference here, but let's save this. Here's low and here's ultra. I'll need to do a side-by-side -side to see the exact difference here, if anything. Then global illumination should affect your performance. Here, doesn't matter. Up to ultra. 
Texture quality as well doesn't affect your performance here or in any other game really, as long as you have enough VRAM. This game comfortably eats 8 gigs of VRAM on my, and it gets a 12 gig 3080 Ti. And of course, if you're just barely reaching the minimum requirements, you pretty much have to stay at low here. However, if you have 10 gigs or more on your graphics card, crank it all the way up to Ultra and leave it there. Things should be more than fine. And on lower end systems, you could probably raise this. Just make sure you check your FPS to see if you're actually losing performance, swapping out textures, things like that, if you run out of VRAM budget. Then, foliage quality, obviously no foliage here. I'd leave it on low or medium, that should be fine. And even in areas with foliage, different maps, I haven't seen a performance difference, no matter what I have this option set to, which is a bit weird. Looks wise, things look the same as well. All the way down to shading quality, this one I'll crank all the way up to ultra. And remember the FPS number that we had? Well, turning on my FPS counter, bam, we're still sitting at a solid 96 FPS. Here's everything raised all the way up to our custom settings with no performance impact. Things should hopefully look a bit better. I'm not sure if these options are currently broken where they don't do anything, or maybe they're doing things and it's just freebies. Well, there you go. That's what I've raised all the way up to ultra and there's no difference. The rest of these options here do actually have a pretty big impact and that's shadow quality, effects quality, and that's it. Obviously, there's a couple more below this. We'll get there just now. First of all, shadow quality. This is a bit of a weird one. Right over here, low gives me 96 FPS, medium 93, 94, high 93, 92, ultra 91, 90. Is there any visual impact? Well, I don't really think so. Performance wise, there's a pretty big impact between these, but of course, there's only a few places that I really notice shadows being really weird. Here, you can't really see too much in terms of shadows. We've got one shadow from the railing over here casting onto the steps, but the best place I found was actually a very specific tree. Something weird happens with shadows, and I'll show you now. If we go to, I think it was radar station, bam, there we go, take off and fly over there. There's one particular bush, or at least an obvious place where I first noticed this, which I'll take you to as well. Something very weird happens with this option. So starting off, making our way to a very particular tree, if we pause and video, change shadow quality from ultra to low, bam, there you go, really shaky, weird, blocky shadow, up to medium, the shadow should be a bit better, there you go, up to high, the shadow should obviously be a little bit better, and that happens as soon as we stop looking around, finally all the way up to ultra, here you go, the shadow looks really good, right? Well, step to the side or look around, it drops to medium settings and then comes back up. Really weird, but I guess dynamic shadows, something like this, just a bit weird that it suddenly snaps to the ultra quality setting, is obviously so when you're running around doing combat, things like that, shadows don't really affect your performance, you stand still to take a screenshot, bam, things look a lot better. Just a bit weird, but that's definitely something that I noticed. Oh, and again, as for foliage quality, well, low foliage, 91 FPS, medium 91, ultra, um, yeah, flashbang. That's also something a bit weird I've noticed about this game, and that's even if you accidentally change the effect quality, which has to do with, I guess, lumen in some way or another, uh, it completely breaks everything when you change from low to anything above or anything above to low. Uh, yeah, weird things happen. You'll need to just exit to the title and either restart the mission or something like that. Don't adjust your settings in game when it comes to the effect quality setting as well. Uh, yeah, weird things happen. Either it'll go super dark, shadows will be completely blown out, or it'll just turn white, and that's that. Yep, for the most part. Anyways, foliage has no effect, which is a little bit weird. But besides that, moving on, scrolling down, we've got Bloom over here. Currently, it's set to off for me, and if we head across to, well, this starting area is a great place to see it. Off, I'm currently getting 108, 109 FPS. Cool. With Bloom set to standard, bam, 102 FPS, but you can see how much work Bloom is doing for making the scene look a lot better. Do you like it on? Do you like it off? Let me know down below. The weird thing that I've noticed is that this flare that's happening over here is just a really low resolution, which is a bit odd, but anyways, I haven't really seen lens flares in many places. Scrolling down, lens flares. By default, it's set to 6%, and I didn't really see many lens flares anywhere. This is quite surprising and it only shows up when Bloom is turned on. 
even though this here is most definitely a lens flare. Even with lens flares turned off here, we still have this. Not too sure why, but anyways. The only place that I've seen lens flares besides with this overly done bloom option, let's turn that off and lens flares on to 100%, is you would expect by the brightest light source, such as this huge spotlight that's shining on the VTOL, right? Well, looking up here, um... There's barely any spotlight up there. I guess that tiny thing's a spotlight. Kind of expected it to be a bit more white. But anyways, there's nothing there. The only place that I could get a true lens flare to happen was on one particular map, which was the convoy map over here, just because it has the sun on it setting. The rest of these are mostly nighttime and only from a very specific position. If I took a step to the side, the lens flare vanished. Having this turned on or off, there's no performance difference. And of course, the lens flare intensity is just how obvious it is on your screen, 100% being you can see it great, and it's just sort of an opacity slider. HDR, your preference entirely, obviously have it set as you see fit if you have an HDR compatible display. Benchmarking just sets everything up too high for me. This doesn't actually run a complete benchmark, it just sort of guesses what your system should have and it sets it. So yeah, there's that. Then graphics methods. Here things get really interesting. We've got reflections and global illumination methods. Let's have a look at these. This mainly has to do with UE5, Unreal Engine 5's lumen lighting. If we come across into this room over here, and have a look out of it, things look pretty flat, and we're setting at a solid 84 FPS, so jumped up 88 FPS. If I were to change reflection from off to SSR, being screen space reflections, you can see the floor is pretty shiny. FPS, 88, no difference. Okay, so if we go ahead and change global illumination to lumen from none, now you can see we've got a huge drop in FPS down to 70. So that's interesting. Let's go ahead and change from screen space reflections to off. Now we're getting a solid 88 FPS. Why is screen space reflections suddenly taking a huge amount of performance? I'm not entirely too sure. I guess that has something to do with ray tracing that's turned on by enabling lumen as global illumination. I really have no idea what's happening here, but by turning on a lumen, we now unlock another option for reflections. This is SSR, 68 FPS. We can now change to lumen reflections. Actions. Once we do that, you can see the reflections get a lot more blurry and I guess more accurate, ray traced, things like that. 61 FPS, a big performance hit there. For the most part, I'd never recommend using Lumen here at all. Just leave your reflections as SSR and Lumen completely off. You'll have a good time. Things look good and they perform really well. Don't know what weird quirks are happening there. Then scrolling all the way down past that section to NVIDIA settings. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, you'll see this here. If you have Intel or AMD, you may see something similar, but different. Anyways, NVIDIA Reflex should give you better input latency. Set this to enabled, basically on all systems. If you have a really low powered CPU, set it to enabled plus boost. Then at the very bottom, we have super sampling or upscaling. We have DLSS, FSR, XESS, and TSR. I'd recommend using NVIDIA DLSS if you're on an NVIDIA GPU, otherwise either AMD or XESS on anything else. I've heard good results about XESS, FSR is okay, and TSR is just terrible. Don't use TSR at all. Down here by the quality mode, we have DLAA, which is native anti-aliasing. It takes your normal native resolution and upscales it, making things look even better. Quality, performance, balance, and ultra performance. If we start off with DLAA from a spot like this over here, you can see that we're getting a solid 56 FPS, which is mostly true for our native FPS. Changing this to quality, we get 83. Motion smoothness is obviously very smooth. Down to balanced 90 FPS, smooth once more. Performance, here's where I started noticing some flickering and shimmering, though it's not too obvious here, 96 FPS. Finally, ultra performance, there's a lot of flickering and shimmering, but we're sitting at a solid 110 FPS, which really isn't bad at all. Obviously, I'd only really recommend playing with the quality preset here or balanced, and that's pretty much as low as I would go. The same goes for any other brand here. TSR, we have a resolution scale slider, 100% is native, 51 FPS, it's okay. That's the native engine FPS, 86, around 60 FPS, all the way down to the lowest, which is 50. There's a ton of shimmering and aliasing happening here, and we're at around 93 FPS. So obviously use one of the AI methods of NVIDIA, AMD, or XESS on balanced or quality, just like that. 
things should be a lot better. But yeah, with that, we've optimized the game pretty much as much as we can with the in-game graphics options, but there's even more that we can do for way more FPS. And of course, we can disable this horrendous mass acceleration. You might not really notice it or really care, but trust me, try this. It's going to feel amazing. Let's start by quitting out of the game and we'll hold start or the Windows key and press R. Inside of the run dialog, type percentage local app data percentage one word backslash followed by night form. Click it and hit OK. This will open up your C users, your username, app.local nightfall folder, which is the Killing Floor 3 configuration folder where everything's cached and saved. Open the saved folder, followed by config, then Windows client, and in here we see the one and only configuration file for the game. What we can do is make more files here to change how the engine works and customize parameters under the hood. Keep in mind, this can be considered modifying game files, and it does make some anti cheats unhappy. Personally, I haven't had any issues with this, with Delta Force or anything else. But of course, I have heard of people getting kicked from games or at least receiving EAC errors, but it's most likely being caused by other things. Obviously, do this if you wish at your own risk. But personally, I'd rather have no mass acceleration and have the game perform a little bit better. If this is what I have to do for it, this is what I have to do for it. Okay, so let's start off at the very top with disabling mass acceleration. Right click you, select new and create a brand new text document. Select everything, including dot text and type it as input capital I dot I and I as such. You should see this pop up, click yes, and now we've created a brand new configuration file. If you don't see .ini at the end of this, or you can't change it, head to view followed by show and make sure file name extensions and hidden items are both ticked. Then open up input.ini and copy and paste this code from down below. Save it and then we can close it. This completely disables mouse acceleration, which is fantastic. Then we can make a new text file here once more and this one we'll call engine capital E dot INI once again yes and open it with notepad inside of here we can paste some engine optimizations to make the game run even better in the description down below you'll find this post on reddit by bkwl22 these are some tweaks to reduce stutters and improve other stuff in killing floor three five months ago i guess this was during a beta but of course it counts here as well this big section over here is the entire config file which we'll be copying and placing into our settings this enables pso pre-caching to reduce stuttering has some anti-aliasing tweaks to reduce ghosting and blur, improves reflections, disables chromatic aberration, which is that red-blue split around objects that you've seen in-game, disables vignetting, which is the darkened corners of your screen, sets bloom to full resolution, so we'll see that change in-game so it's not so weird and blocky. You can change this if you wish. Sets anisotropic filtering to 16x to give you way better looking textures for free. There's no performance impact here. And of course, this can be even more noticeable with lower texture settings. Improves shadow quality and resolution. I don't think this changes that weird issue whenever you move around and it flops between settings, but it should result in better looking shadows. And finally, ambient occlusion tweaks. We'll copy all of these and we'll paste it into this text file, save it and close it. Now we just need to right click both of these, choose properties and make sure that read only is ticked here for input. And again, right click properties, read only for engine. Doing so, the game won't delete these files and it'll actually use them. Now our changes should be active. Obviously, I've tested this game in solo and multiplayer and it works fine for me. Do let me know down below what you find the results from this being. The Reddit user who posted this didn't post a before FPS count. It was just an after, so that's a bit weird. But anyways, performance did greatly improve for me after this. If we get back with our optimized settings to the same place, performance should feel a bit better. I think the reflection looks a bit better. Maybe that's just me. And of course, we're starting at a solid 93 FPS, still with our same optimized settings. The game feels even smoother, mostly because of the disabled mass acceleration. It feels great. And there we go. 80-ish FPS, not bad at all. The game definitely looks noticeably sharper. And of course, things should look quite a bit cleaner. Not sure why there's so much flickering going on there, but for the most part, things are way, way better. Let's see if everything's the same. Yep, everything is still the same. Fantastic. Also completely forgot to mention Bloom. Even though we're supposed to be raising the quality there, it still looks really, really garbage with the obviously pixelated Bloom happening here. Just a little bit sad, but again, I guess you jump it around, bam, 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 bam. It doesn't really matter all that much. It's just something I would like to see being improved. Surely see this in such a low blocky quality could definitely be improved, right? Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. Let me know.
And yet, with that, we've optimized the game for the best possible performance, and of course, things are feeling way, way better. Do let me know what you think down below, and of course, you'll find related guides to get a better performance, and of course, a separate guide on disabling your mass acceleration, just in case you want a separate guide to send to friends, etc. Anyways, hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. Mine's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.